The Canon XE10 and 15 are cool looking little cinema cameras. How do they hold up against comparable cameras? Let's find out. You know, sometimes I get cameras just because they look cool, and this camera definitely looks cool. I've been looking at this for years, and I said, that's a cool looking camera. I wonder what it would be like to have that. So I got one. It's the Canon XC10. These things cost two and a half thousand dollars when they came out, and you get them used now for around six hundred dollars, but are they worth it? It's basically a lens with a grip on the side that you can turn, which is really cool. It looks kind of like a mini C100, and I guess it kind of is. It has a cooling fan down the side, so you can see it's made for video work. I guess the best way to describe this is if a C100 had sex with a bridge camera and had an underdeveloped little child, this is what it would be. It actually weighs more than this FZ2500 bridge camera. This thing is heavy. For what it is, it actually is smaller than it looks. It's a pretty small camera. It's basically just a lens, like a full frame lens with a grip on the side. Then it's got a little screen on the back. The screen flips up, that's as far as it goes. It doesn't go any further than that. It doesn't flip up and it doesn't flip out. So you cannot use this for selfies. You can't see yourself. Canon always has impressive build quality. That's one thing I like about Canon is that it's really well made. It's really heavy duty. This feels like it's just metal and glass. That's all this is, it's that heavy. This thing. Is it's actually going to make your arm tired from holding it. And for, it's a pretty small camera for as a cinema camera goes. It's got a hot shoe. You can take pictures with it. You can switch on the switch here between picture and video. But I think it's more made for video. So how does it compare with comparable cameras? Let's shoot this in 4K and compare with the other ones. Here we go. Here's what it looks like with the Canon XC10 in 4K. Skin colors are really good. Well, it's Canon, so it should be. And we're going to come back to this in a minute here. I'm going to point out some stuff. Let's compare compare it right away with a Sony RX10 Mark IV. This is the Sony. Looks pretty good. Now let's go back to the XC10 footage. The first thing you notice is how soft the image looks. Let's compare it side by side. Here it is compared to the RX10 Mark IV bridge camera. Here it is compared to the Sony AX100 camcorder, the Canon G60 camcorder. These are all one inch sensors, very similar. Uh, little pocket cameras, the Lumix LX10 the Sony RX100 Mark VII. And here it is side by side with a professional AG UX90 one inch camcorder from Panasonic. And now let's try a little tiny Samsung NX Mini, the world's smallest one inch sensor interchangeable lens pocket camera. Look at that. This is the size of a deck of cards. And the smaller sensor, Canon G70 camcorder, and lastly, the Canon C100 Mark II cinema camera, which only shoots in 1080. The C100 Mark II, which only does 1080, I think looks a little better than the XC10 shooting in 4K. The main issue about the XC10 footage is it's not very sharp. And the other thing you notice, I don't know if you notice this or not, it goes in and out of focus. Like it's focused, then it's not focused, then it's sharp, then it's not sharp, then it's sharp, then it's not sharp. That's because this came out in 2015 and with most cameras back then, face tracking autofocus back then was not very stellar. The image quality is good, but that's only when it's in focus and the screen doesn't flip around so you can't see yourself. So for that, you're gonna have to use something like this, like a Ninja. So now your portable camera is no longer very portable. Now you're starting to look like a wannabe filmmaker. Let's say you don't need this to see yourself. This takes us to the next big issue with this camera. And that is, if you want to shoot 4K, you have to record into a CFast card. CFast cards are not cheap. The file sizes on the 4K, it's like 300 something megabytes per second. A 20 second file is like two or three gigabytes. It's ridiculous. So let me just sum up the main issues with this camera. It's really heavy. It's not fun to use. It has no selfie screen. The color's good. 4K uses fast cards and the file sizes are ridiculous. 30 seconds is three gigabytes. The next really frustrating factor, there's no dedicated buttons or dials for f-stop, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance. For that, you have to go into the menu. Forget using the joystick. If you want to try to do it that way, you're going to end up in an insane asylum the next day. The only way to really get to those settings fast is with the touch screen. That's really the only way. The autofocus is slow and unpredictable. Focus goes in and out every few seconds. It never stays razor sharp. That drives me nuts. Uh, it has an ND filter 
filter, but if you have it in wide dynamic range, then the lowest ISO setting it'll give you is 500. So even with the built-in ND, if you're in bright sunlight, you're gonna need an ND filter screwed on the front in addition to the ND that's in here because it's just not gonna darken it enough. Stabilization is good, it's pretty good. So, I mean, it's a good idea. I thought this was a cool idea. Like, it looks really cool. That's why I bought it, because it looks cool. And I was always like intrigued by it. So it's a cool looking thing. And what's the difference between the XE10 and the XE15? The XE10 has an eighth inch audio in. The XC15 has XLR in. Woohoo! And there's a few other minor changes. The F15 doesn't need CFAST cards anymore. Um, so that's good for that. But it's basically the same camera. One inch sensor. <laughs> thing is with Canon cameras, they all have something really cool, usually the ergonomics, the shape, the design, the thought that went into the design of it. Theoretically, it's good. They usually have good size sensors and stuff like that, but there's always one thing or two things or three things about each camera that Canon makes that just frustrates the hell out of you. Like, why did they not do that right? Why did they always screw up in one area? So this thing, even though it looks really cool, it's super heavy, it needs CFAST cards, it doesn't focus very well, and the file sizes are ridiculously huge. So, uh, I don't know, I don't want this. I'm gonna give this one away. MarcusPix.GiveawayEnter.com, of course. Here goes the next one. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's a cool camera. You, you, you could get some good stuff with it it's just not as uh it's not <laughs> I mean, there's always something about it you know what this thing weighs a half a pound more than the canon g70 camcorder it weighs more than the zs2500 bridge camera it weighs more than an ax100 camcorder and it weighs three times more than any one inch pocket camera it's cool looking it really it, it's fun it's fun to hold in your hands it but it weighs a lot it's really heavy uh so i mean there, it, it's like oh like all canon cameras i want to like it i love the shape i love the design i love the ergonomics it looks like a fun camera the handle moves that's kind of cool but then when you finally get it and you end up playing with it it's not fun hmm oh well I thought I'd throw this in there because I was uh, reviewing other one inch cameras. I thought this would be timely to get this. Somebody asked for about this in the comments, so here you go. Here's my thoughts on the XC10 camera from Canon. And speaking of one inch sensors, I'm recording this video right now with two RX100 pocket cameras which have one inch sensors. And I only use these in 1080. They can do 4K, but 1080 is more than good enough. Look at the quality. This is what I record almost all my YouTube videos with. That's all I need. Little one inch sensors are fine for YouTube. And I'm using pocket cameras, not big, giant, heavy, clunky, impressive looking cinema cameras for YouTube. Okay, well, that was my, my thing for this. I hope I educated you about something. I will see you in the next video.